Hey crafty people, it's Tasha here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm joining all to new for their marvellous monthly series September release. I'm playing with this month's dynamic duo and with this you're going to get a layering stencil set with a coordinating stamp set. You can also add the die as an add-on to the subscription if you wish to. I'm going to position the first section of the stencil image onto an A2 panel of Nina 80 pound. This is just my preference for most everything when I want a white cardstock. I'm using some of the satin tape to mask off any areas that I don't want my ink to go. It's not too easy to see them on camera, but the stencils actually have etched lines. They're going to tell you exactly what goes where. Uh, you can see these lines much better in person, so it really is easy to line up. I'm using one of the mini blending brushes, which are my go-to for small and detailed areas because they are just so easy for me to hold. I've chosen some of the crisp dye inks for today's project and I'm starting with bamboo over both. I like to focus the colour to the bottom of the stem and then blend up and out to the top. You can totally leave it like that but I like to take it one step further by adding a darker shade to the bottom that's going to deepen it even more. So in this case I'm adding some parrot. Now I'm lining up the next section of the stencil again using that satin tape to mask off where needed. This is also going to hold the stencil in place on my cardstock so it kind of has a dual function here and don't forget you can peel and reuse the same pieces a whole bunch of times. When I've finished today's project I'll peel these off and stick them down onto my desk or my craft mat so that they're ready for next time I'm crafting. I'm using the same technique to colour the second layer of foliage but I am applying it a little heavier to give slightly darker stems. For the third section I'm changing it up and swapping to just green and then hunter green and I'm using the same technique to give the bottoms of my stems some shadow and just to give it all a little bit of dimension. So that's all of the stems and foliage done and now I'm moving on to the flowers. It's the same here with the foliage outline etched onto the stencil. It makes it super easy to line up each flower. The technique is still the same. I'm concentrating the colour to the base of the petal and fading down and out to the edges. Rather than blending two shades though, I am sticking to one, so polar bear for this first layer of petals. I went to shade darker with winter lake because I really love the look of the alternate petals, but again, it's all optional. You do you. Back to that first section to do the other flowers. I chose a pop of sunshine with lemon ice and then citrus burst for this one, just because it reminded me of a buttercup. Then for the large flower, I'm gonna use amethyst and grape agate. I like that the different colored flowers bunch together, makes it feel like they're really wild flowers. You've picked them from a meadow that's just full of all these different flowers, like nature has run wild and free. I'm going warm toned caramel toffee for the flower centers, and I love how that looks against both of those different flowers. These centres and the lavender are all slightly different because you actually only have the first layer on the stencil and then you add some detail with the coordinating stamp set. I went grape agate for the lavender's base layer so I'm going to add a shade darker plum for the details. These are really loose so you don't need to worry about lining them up perfectly. Nobody is going to notice if you're a touch off with placement. In fact, if you don't want to, you don't have to add the stamp layers at all. Personally, I do think that some details for the largest flower and then for all the flower centres along with that lavender finishes the whole thing off nicely. If you get the add-on die set, you can cut the whole thing, but I'm leaving the panel whole so I can add some black splatter with my watercolour brush marker in jet black. 
and just scribbling some pigment onto this old gift card and flicking straight off the edge using the brush marker itself. Add a little bit of water if you need to to help it move a little bit easier. Now you have to set this aside to dry but using the magic of TV I've got one all ready to go. I'm leaning into the whole meadow rustic theme with some golden twine wrapped around but instead of actually wrapping it and having all that wasted thread on the back behind the panel I'm just going to double a single piece over do that three times and then I'm taping each side to the back with some of Altenew's sticky tape which is super strong and long lasting. My sentiment is from the included stamp set and I cut it out with the coordinating die. As I said, this video is part of a hop with Altenew for September's marvellous monthly series release. They've got $300 worth of prizes that Altenew are generously giving away. So be sure to like, follow and comment for your chance to win. The link to the next video is below in my description box, along with more details about the giveaway and also the link to Altenew's video, which is the very start of today's hop. All the products I used today are linked below and I've got more information and some inspiration for the Spark Joy subscription over on my vlog. Thanks for spending this time with me. Have a lovely, happy, safe and wonderful week. Stay crafty. Bye.